All right, we're going to jump to Romans chapter 2, please. What about the heathen who never heard the gospel before? What are you going to do about them? Well, we're going to see what the Bible says about that. So then, do the heathen, do the heathen go to hell? That's the question. Who never heard the word? So I'm going to cover, excuse me right there. All right, so when I say heathen, I'm simply saying people who never heard the gospel, okay? Who never heard the gospel before. So are they going to go to hellfire? Well, the Bible says, so you're going to mark these verses down, which will be helpful. Romans 2 is the number one chapter, and you want to jump to this every time. We're going to look at verse 14. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, correct? Yeah, they don't have the written law. Do by nature the things contained in the law. These having not the law are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their what? Hearts. Their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the mean while accusing or else excusing one another. So you'll notice right here that in verse 14, that the Gentiles, they do not have the law. But what's going to happen to these people is that even though they don't have the law, the Lord's not just going to damn them just because based on their knowledge of what they don't know about the law. He's going to judge them based on their knowledge of what they do know in the law, in their conscience. Isn't that what verse 15 said? 14 and 15? Law in their conscience. So when God judges them with hellfire, he's going to see how well they lived according to their conscience. I mean, look at verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the who? Doers of the law shall be what? Justified. See that? If they do the things contained in the law on their conscience, they're justified. And then what, what is the Christian salvation? Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So see, when they don't have the opportunity to hear that particular part of the gospel, that justification, they get this justification right here in their conscience. Amen. Yeah. Now here's another thing is that when they go by their conscience, you'd be surprised how much they know. The heathen know more than you think they know. So you'd be surprised about that. So we're going to look at several examples here. Jump to Genesis chapter 20, please. Look at the book of Genesis, chapter 20. Well, the heathen, I mean, they never heard. Oh, you'd be, you'd be surprised how much they may know more than you. Some pagan tribal person who's worshiping some kind of great spirit out there would be probably closer to salvation than a person who's educated in school and heard the gospel so many times. You might say, how so, Pastor? Because think about this. Why would the Native Americans, why would certain pagans worship a god? Why wouldn't they go for evolution? Who would be dumb to believe in evolution? See that? So it shows that people who had no education, they had a common sense there was at least some kind of god. See? You'd be surprised about that. So think about the uncivilized tribes today. Why do they worship some kind of god? Not only that, why do uncivilized tribes, not only do they worship God, why do they have laws? Why do they have morals? They have knowledge of what's right and wrong. They have a worship of God and morals. Now, obviously, not everything relates to the Bible, but the point is this. The point is, is that they're getting closer to the Bible more than today's educated, high-minded, idiotic, Bible-rejecting, Atheists and evolutionists. Amen. you got to understand that fact. So the Lord, He gives them more than you think they know. Look at the book of Genesis chapter 20. And look at verse 3. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night, and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man, for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. Look at Abimelech's response, verse 4. But Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, wilt thou slay also a what? Righteous nation, said he not unto me, she is my sister, and she, even she herself said, he is my brother. In the what? Integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands have I done this. 
See, Abimelech didn't mean to commit adultery here. But look at, so did God slay him? No, look at verse 6. And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart. For I also withheld thee from what? Sinning against me, therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. Look at that. So you see, the Lord, he knows what he's doing. Not only that, jump to Genesis 19. Uh, Genesis 18, excuse me. Genesis chapter 18. So do the heathen go to hell? No. Why? Because of point number one, they go by the conscience right here. And you'd be surprised how much they know their Bible more than you. You'd be surprised. So that's one case right here. Second case right here is that, look at the book of Genesis chapter 18. Now, you, if you're fast, you can jump to 2 Peter 3.9 as well. 2 Peter 3.9, but we're not going to turn there. The verse says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all, all should come to repentance. So you'll notice that the Lord, in case number two, He doesn't want anyone to burn. Well, it does not make sense that God, if He would just damn them to hell if they never heard the gospel. If He wanted them to be saved from hell, He would have given them the gospel. Amen. See that? Look at Genesis chapter 18. And we're going to look at verses 24 through 32. Notice what God did with Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Those Sodomites, homosexuality, that kind of wicked corruption. Look at verse 24. Peradventure there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? And then that be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And then what did God say at verse 26? He's going to spare the whole city of Sodom just for fifty. You think that's merciful enough? Look at verse 32. And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but this once. Peradventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for what? Ten. Look at this. So it, another case right here is very simple. God is merciful. Amen. God is merciful. He doesn't want people to burn. He'll spare a whole wicked city just for ten. Oh, I don't think God is merciful. Oh, look at your life, man. You better thank God you didn't drop dead a long time ago. Yeah. Buddy, your own life is more than evidence that God is merciful, Amen. beyond merciful. All right, look at Acts chapter 10 now. Acts chapter 10. All right. Now, this one you want to use. This is going to be very important. So, we see one case, God judges them according to the laws of their conscience. Two, the Lord is merciful. He's not going to damn a person easily. Another thing is that the heathen know more than you think they know. But here's another thing that you want to use. I had this atheist who wanted to act like a smart aleck, and he's like, well, you shouldn't have so win to me, because I'm a sincere guy, and I went by the best of my conscience, and I could have went to heaven until you told me the gospel now. You know, so you just ruined it for me. You know what the easy answer to that is? The easy answer to that is, Look, bright eyes, if you're really going by the honesty of your conscience, you would believe in a God and you would actually get saved in Jesus Christ. Yeah, amen. You would accept the gospel. Mm -hmm. Because look at Acts chapter 10, verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Look at that. This man was trying to seek after God. This person was trying to serve him sincerely. Now look at <clears throat> verse 4. And he w when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy alms are come up for a memorial before God, and now send men to Joppa and call one for Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodgeth uh, with one Simon a tanner whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. So you know what happened at Acts chapter 10, verse 1 through 6? If a person is truly seeking after God, God will eventually give him the gospel. Amen. So that's the thing, is that why won't God give them the gospel? He will. He will. He will eventually give the gospel if their conscience is sincere. And then I just simply, 
I can simply just say to that atheist, you're sincere, I understand. You go by the conscience as best you can. Great, why don't you get saved right now in yeah. Jesus Christ? Yeah. Let's bow. That's right. Boom. Oh, no, I can't do that. See? Got them. Got them. See? No, they're lying through their teeth. When they said they're going by the honesty and sincerity of conscience, everyone's a liar when I, when I, whenever I hear that. Only God can tell what's in their heart and their conscience. Amen.